So this will be part 5 of our complete application in ASP.NET with c and SQLite and today we are going to be talking about creating a data context. What is a data context? Data context is a simply, it's simply a way to communicate between your application and the database. So since you are not going to be creating database objects manually, you want a way for some middle pair, uh, some a context to actually do this job of fetching data, storing data, manipulating the object in the database. That's why we need a data context. That's what we are going to be doing in this part 5. Again, if you are joining for the first time, please subscribe to my channel. As I used to say, this motivates me. If you want to go further, please buy me a coffee. So let's go ahead to get started. The first thing we want to do is to create uh, a class in the data folder and we are going to call it hospital context. So I'm going to go to my data folder. I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it hospital context. Now I'm trying to follow the procedure in the website as strictly as possible, although I could do this in, uh, in a different way. But I want you to be able to follow the procedure on the website without having to reach me. But if you have challenges, you, you are free to let me know. Now I promise that this uh, uh, tutorial is going to be zero coding. And so feel free to copy the code snippets and paste. But feel free uh, to make out some time to look into the code to see if you can make some sense out of it. Now, the context I call hospital context has to um, inherit DB context. So DB context is a, a class provided by .NET, uh, .NET Core uh, to help you actually do uh, uh, ORM. So I'm going to inherit from DB context. Right, so I'm going to show potential fixes and I'm going to just bring in the namespace. It's using Microsoft Authentic Framework Core. And so the first thing we want to do is to um, so have, yeah, so I, I think it's better to just copy, so copy everything and paste. So we are simply given the context, the tables or the names of the classes we want to use to generate our tables. So I'm just going to paste it right here. Okay, so I think I can pull down control dots. Uh, yeah, this is fine. All right, so at this point, uh, let me bring down this one and shift this one as well. So this is where we are. This is our context class. This is how it looks like. And you've done it, if you've come this far, you don't need to do anything further in this class. Now the next thing we are going to do is to generate our tables. For now, there are no tables in our database. If I go back to my application, so if I go back to my application and we have this connection, if I go to tables, you see there are no tables in our database and now we want to generate the tables. There are a number of ways to do that. But let's uh, take it step by step. The first thing we want to do is to add a connection string to the app setting the J, uh, the JSON uh, file. So this is what the connection string looks like. So you specify connection string and then specify the data source where the connection where the database is. In this case database is in data hospital db.db. Uh, db. So if I go back to app settings right here, so these are app settings file. I'm just going to add, um, going to just create a space here and just paste it. So I've created, um, I've added the connection string right here. The next step says also add the connection string to the startup.cs file in the configure services method as shown below. So one of the tell these applications that when the system starts up, it's going to connect to the database uh, using a connection string. So if I go to the startup.cs, which is this file right here, we have we don't have a connection string. So we are going to uh, simply add 
um, options of SQLite connection. So let's see. So if I go back here, let me just, just copy this services that add controllers with views. So you see services that add controllers with views. And the next line is services that add DB context and specify the DB context. So I'm going to just copy it and paste. And I'm going to explain it to you. I'm not typing it out because we just have to save time. All right, so we have uh, just import these and use SQLite. I think we can import from Entity Framework Core. So we have added um, the connection to the startup. And the next thing we want to do is to pre finally run the code below to generate the migration called initialize. You can change the name if you want. This will simply generate the script that will create the database objects for you. So we're going to say add migration and give the name of the migration. Now, the migration uses whatever context you have on your database. So that context we created, I'm going to just go back to show you. So this context have all this database because I told you that the context relate to the database. So this context is going to check what classes are there and use these classes to generate the tables. So a migration is going to generate the script that is going to generate or create these tables. All right, so first I'm going to save everything. I'm going to kind of build this project to make sure it works. So I'm going to go to build, build solution, and uh, no issues found as you can see. Uh, so it's building and Okay, so have a small problem here. So it expects, uh, I think I missed out one closing braces. All right, so rebuild again and it should be fine. Okay, so the next thing says um, add migration called initialize. Now, if you have more than one context in your database, in your application, you need to specify the context you want to use for the migration. And now we have only one context, so we don't have to specify the context. So if I go to uh, Server Explorer, so go to View Server Explorer um, uh, View, I'm going to Other Windows, and I'm going to Package a Manager Console, that's where I should be. I think that should be right. And here I'm going to write the command Add Migration. And I'm going to call it initialize. And you can say minus context and specify the name of the context like hospital context. So in this way, it's going to use the hospital context. But in this case, if I don't specify the context, it's also going to use the same context because we have only one single context in our application. So I'm going to go back here. I'm just going to check if everything is OK. So I'm going to just run this, okay? So it's going to generate the migration scripts and I'm gonna show you where it places this migration script. So if you go back to your application now, you can see a new folder called migration created right here. It's migration and you see how the script has been created here. So you have it initialized, created with a timestamp and snapshot. You don't have to worry about this. Now, how do we generate the tables? To generate the tables, you simply run update database. So I'm going to go back and simply say update database. And this should be able to create all the tables we need. Build succeeded, done. We're not going to check, it's just like magic. It's going to create all these tables for us. So if I go back to my SQLite window here, and I'm going to right click here, uh, right click on the tables, I'm going to refresh and boom, we have all the tables has been created for us, the eight tables corresponding to the classes we have have been created for us. So if you've come this far, we are done with this part and in the next part, uh, let's just preview what we are going to be doing in the next part. I think the next part will be part six and in the next part we are going to be uh, using a web host, web host extension and creating CDAS 
See that as simply temporary data or initial data you have to insert into your database. So I'm going to stop here. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Please remember to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. And also feel free, feel free to leave me a comment below if you have challenges. Like and share. Uh, this used to be uh, motivating for me. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.